Hey guys, welcome back to Ask Cam Doc. My name's Shane and I'm a final year medical student and neuroscience supervisor at the University of Cambridge. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about targeted muscle reinnovation. So today we're going to be answering four key questions. Firstly, what exactly is TMR? Secondly, where did it come from? What's the history? Thirdly, what's the evidence for it? And lastly, what's the future directions and where can we take this? Right, so let's get to it then. What exactly is TMR or targeted muscle reinnovation? So it's essentially a surgical procedure that's used to help post amputees with their pain and also improve their prosthetic use. Essentially following an amputation, a lot of patients end up with neuropathic or phantom limb pain. In fact, it's often both. And that's not very well treated by the current pharmacological, radiological, psychological therapies, etc. And there's often the stigma, you know, surgery for pain is essentially just going to cause more pain and it's not worth carrying out any real operations for it. But actually, TMR, Targeted Muscle Reinnovation, is honestly one of the biggest exceptions. Essentially, after the amputation of a limb, the sensory neurons and the sensory nerves undergo a degree of aberrant growth because they try to go and innovate a distal target. But of course, as the limb has been amputated, there is no distal target. And as a result, they just end up forming a neuroma. And this is the neuroma, or this is the thing that causes a lot of pain, especially neuropathic pain. And like I mentioned before, it's not very well treated by pharmacological therapies, which is usually the first line. In order to get around this, several surgical therapies have been tried. Most of them are based on the concept of, yes, you have a neuroma, you find it, you chop it off, and then you just bury the proximal sensory neuron into some muscle or just cap it off and just leave it there. But of course, that doesn't really solve the problem because uh, inevitably the neuroma reforms and it ends up causing pain kind of a few months down the line. So with TMR, how it differs from the traditional therapies is that we have this sensory neuron with a neuroma causing pain. We firstly identify the neuroma, remove or excise the neuroma. And then we have this sensory neuron and we identify local motor neurons uh, that go and innovate redundant muscles. For example, if you've had a amputation at your elbow, your biceps muscles aren't really doing too much. So any motor neuron going to that is a redundant motor neuron. So we identify those redundant motor neurons and we also transect them and we connect that transected motor neuron to the sensory neuron from which we removed the neuroma. Originally. So essentially, the sensory neuron now has a viable, active, distal target that it can go and innovate. And what this means is, this is less likely to now form a neuroma and cause pain. Often the analogy that's used is, you connect a live wire to a socket. And once that's been done, it's now quite safe and it's no longer going to cause a problem or pain. And so that's the principle behind TMR. So to summarize the, the technique then, we identify a sensory neuron with a neuroma that causes pain. We remove the neuroma and we reconnect the sensory neuron to a redundant motor neuron that's nearby. That has been the technique. Now let's move on to the second point, which is where did it come from? What's the history? How long has it been around? So TMR has actually been around for the last 15 years. However, its conception was slightly for a different purpose than pain relief. It was mainly developed to help improve myoelectric prosthesis use. So what does that mean? Essentially, prosthetic limbs can either be plasticky, don't really do that much in terms of electrical control, or they can be more advanced, myoelectric prosthetics. Essentially, you can think about moving uh, an arm and that'll send a signal to motors in the prosthetic limb in order to flex it, extend it, etc. So in order to help control these myoelectric prostheses, researchers developed targets of muscle renovation. Essentially, motor neurons were connected up to different muscles to give a more reliable signal to the myoelectric prosthetic limb so it will be a stronger signal for it to detect and it can be controlled more reliably 
because of it. So the first described case of targeted muscle renovation was actually 15 years ago, a patient who had bilateral shoulder disarticulation or bilateral shoulder amputation, which left him with two pectoralis major muscles which really didn't have anything else to do because normally it's involved in flexion of the upper limb. So what they did was they connected up local motor neurons to different heads of the pectoralis major and allowed the myoelectric prosthetic limb to have a stronger signal from these different heads. Essentially they were known as bioamplifiers. And I'll obviously reference this for you guys to have a look at the original paper. So that's been a quick run through of the technique, what it involves, and also the history and evolution of targeted muscle renovation. So now let's have a look at the evidence behind it. So anecdotally, I was at Massachusetts General Hospital for my elective over summer, and that was a major center that does toxal muscle renovation. And I saw so many patients who came in with a lot of pain following the amputation, who were kind of counseled about TMR, and they were very enthusiastic after having a look at some of the evidence for it. And then they signed up, they went for the operation and follow up a few weeks later, already a remarkable improvement. And okay, fine, things take time in order to develop, so a neuroma could actually develop a bit later on that down the line. But I was also seeing follow-up patients who've had TMR procedures in the past few months, and even they had quite robust improvements. But that's obviously anecdotal experiences, so let's actually examine the literature. In the literature, there are a whole range of evidence going from case studies, case reports, which we know is kind of low-level evidence, all the way up to an RCT or a randomized control trial, which we know is a much higher level of evidence. Yes, there has only been a, one real RCT that has been done, obviously due to ethical concerns and considerations that need to be taken, but that RCT did show promising improvements in analgesia and pain relief. So there definitely, definitely is a strong basis and evidence for TMR in helping to provide analgesia to post-amputees. But as with anything, we need more evidence we need longer follow-up times, we need larger population sizes, validated outcome measures, and we need very good controls. Often, some of the papers that are out there in the literature have to compromise, especially on sample sizes and other parameters and factors, purely because of the ethical considerations, dropout rates, etc. So the future is promising, but definitely more evidence and more research needs to be done. So that brings us on nicely to the future avenues and future directions for TMR. In terms of the future, there have been studies that have actually carried out TMR at the exact point of amputation. Because the idea is that why wait for a neuroma to develop in order to cut it off and connect the sensory neuron to a redundant motor neuron? Why not just do it at the time of the operation and prevent the neuroma from forming in the first place? And this idea obviously was put to the test with even quite a few research papers now. And they have also shown promising results just as with standard TMR done after the amputation. So the future definitely looks like TMR at the time of amputation could be a possibility, but also other studies have shown that combining TMR with several other types of surgical procedure, as well as kind of approaching it in an MDT or a multidisciplinary approach where we're combining certain pharmacological therapies with obviously TMR as well as psychological therapies can actually have the final best outcome to the patient because as with all of medicine and surgery, it's important to take a holistic view in order to get the best outcome. So that has been an introduction into TMR or total muscle renovation. If you want to find out more, please have a look at our website at www.askhamdoc.com. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this and learned a lot. See you guys next time.